So as you know, I was eliminated before Maria. I know she talked about it in my video. And by the way, I had so much fun cooking with. I had so much fun having you the other day. This is awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. No problem. Um, so today I'm here to learn her mojito upside down mango mojito mango upside down mojito <laughs> upside down cake. Excuse me, I didn't get the chance to try it, but from what I'm hearing from everybody I'm still taught to is that it's really good. Oh yeah, this cake. You know what's interesting is is while well, Joe Bastard. Uh, insulted my cake and said that it was no better than and I do not school pudding. I don't second that by the way her, her he needs to play politics <laughs> I, I personally <laughs> like Joe Bastianich and I think difference. he's a weaselly little shit but we disagree on other stuff but so, why don't we make but, this about your cooking anyways. why don't we make this so, about yes. your cooking anyways <laughs> my point being weaselly little shit who shall not be named said that this cake was boarding school pudding at best so I would like to demonstrate to the world that it is actually Quite amazing. I think it's the best cake ever invented. What if and I tell you that's only boarding school pudding? I will slap you. Okay. Just slap, slap, slap. I'm already saying it's amazing. <laughs> so. No, 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 no. But I mean, realistically, this is my <laughs> most famous cake flavor. Okay. Um, well, actually, maybe Chai might be more famous because I got in Rachel Ray. Um, but this cake actually got me on the preferred vendors list with Wolfgang Puck's wow. Catering here in Minneapolis, um, just based on the merit of the one cake flavor. So. I'm I'm really excited. So let's, no, let's get started. <laughs> yeah, let's Seriously. Get started. Okay, so I make a very dense cake. It's not a very very dense cake, but it's a dense cake um, to support the the rum and, and the soak and everything. So what I've got here is two cups of flour, a cup and a half of sugar, a packet of instant pudding mix, vanilla, um, four teaspoons of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. Um, to that, I'm going to add four. Eggs, which is really boring. You're gonna to wash. crack those bitches? I'm gonna crack these bitches. Yeah, no one laughs this time. Because <laughs> <laughs> Sean knows better. Okay, so what is, So you have sugar in here, you have flour. Sugar, flour, bacon powder. Is it just all purpose flour? Is it, or is it cake um, flour? It's cake flour. Okay. I mean, you can make this with all purpose flour, it doesn't hurt anything. So I let that go. I let that go. She lets it really go. I'm really excited. My two favorite things, dessert and alcohol, combined in one. What? How much better can that get, right? So the third cup of rum. <laughs> and rum. I'm gonna turn this off so you can hear me. Two thirds a cup of. Now, do you need this going that hard? I do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got two thirds a cup of mango pulp. This stuff is awesome. And my butter's not melted yet. Her butter's really smooth. So anyways... <laughs> what? <laughs> so I got here, at the same time... You're so weird. Anyways, so I have a half a cup of uh, butter... Oh, a quarter cup of butter melting here. Okay. I've got a, quarter, a half cup of butter melting in there. And I want to add half a cup of brown sugar. If I can get it out. Another quarter cup of rum. So what what inspired you to learn this and make come up with uh, <laughs> this dish for the first time? What you know, I honestly don't remember. I, I a lot of my recipes I dream up in my sleep. And okay. It sounds weird, but that's just what happens. No, no, no. I understand. And, uh, I do the same thing. So. I'll wake up and I'll have an idea, and I think this was one of them, if I remember correctly. So I'm putting a tablespoon of flour in here also. And why the flour? Is that the thickness of it? Just thickens it up. Okay. This is a, it's like a quick, it's not a caramel caramel, but it's a quick kind of caramel for the bottom of the cake. For the bottom and top of the cake. So, yeah, so that's what we've I've heard this is so good. I'm so excited about trying this. Seriously, I'm like, I hit at a candy shop right now. Oh, it's so good. And I don't have to cook right now, which is even better. So. Well, we're both, we're both kind of looking forward to this because, like, I've been off of gluten for a very long time now. Way too long. Oh my god, you know what I did? So we're back on the wine today. <laughs> I forgot you to... I cooled the pan I, and... No, I, I greased the pan with with um, Crisco, but I always like spray it with a flour spray. I forgot to do that. So I'll just... It's just for the sides. And that won't affect the sauce off. at all? No, it won't. Oh. Okay, so... Let's put this aside for a minute. Okay. Where do you... I'll yeah. put it somewhere. That's fine. So back to this, I put the rum in there. Yeah, I put the rum in she there. She saw how I can get fly everywhere, so she's not like wanting me to do anything right now. <laughs> she's like, you don't touch like, the kitchen. Stand back. 
So now, how much a, butter was that? Just there spit? was a half a cup of butter. Okay, so. Yeah. Was good. <laughs> Oops. So I see that as a quick batter. Oh, you should try this, by the way. Can I grab a spoon in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mango Excuse pulp me. is the best thing ever. I've never had it before. So you can buy this. Can you buy this at like any store? Do you think it is a specialty think, store? No, it's just regular grocery stores. Um, some ethnic food restaurants because it's like an Indian. You know, it's actually it's reminds really like me. It's like mango It reminds me so much of like Thai. Oh, really? Yeah. Kind of like very tropical. It's really good. So. Well, it's like pureed mango. Yeah, no, it's good. So, I've already sliced. I got mango sliced. And they're sticking. Now normally I'd take some time and make this all pretty, but uh, not today. Not today. I'm not worth it. No. Mm. So did you have fun last time cooking? I had an, a great time with you. That was awesome. That was so much more fun than California. <laughs> yeah, no. When you're drinking, you're not under stress. My gosh, it's amazing how much different it could be, right? Well, when you don't, ha yeah. And I do. I wish you could have tasted. My ravioli out there to see how much different it was here. Because I wish I could have just been there for you when you were cooking because it sounds like it was like super stressful for you. And uh, yeah, I had just I a little bit of I a breakdown. I would have told people off for you. Yeah. I would have told people back fuck up. I would have. It was an experience. It was definitely that. I'm glad I went through it. I met some amazing people, such as Marie. And other people like me. <laughs> and All right. um. So, it looks pretty good to me. I mean, what, what do you normally do that's different than that? Well, I'll do them in like concentric circles or, you know, make sure that they're more even or whatever. But the basic idea is just to get it relatively even. Yeah. On the bottom there. Now we've got a really thick batter. Get a plate to put them out. And then this I kind of dollop on it gently so I don't move. What do you think? Go. Okay, so when I was cooking, I don't know that they're going to show this, but when I was baking this at the, uh, at the show, um, someone absconded my batter bowl when I was done. Like the, the, the remaining batter in here was uh, grabbed by one of the audience members and everyone was like licking the bowl. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was good. That batter was good. It's just really good. Do you have, now you have alcohol in your batter? Oh yes. <laughs> Every <laughs> stage of the game you put, you're layering the booze. Look, you layer instead flavor, of you layering layer booze. the ingredients, you're laying the alcohol. That's, that's. Yes. <laughs> so, this is what we got. So we're putting it in a 320 degree oven for about an hour. Okay. And then we drink. <laughs> so, oh, my eyes running. <laughs> so, she says running. This is uh, this is good for now. Where did my pot go? I'm already oh, drinking. That that okay, so the next thing we do is I have a uh, another quarter cup of flour. Okay. And I need to put another quarter cup of rum. Is this is there. this like a roux or what is this like? I mean, it's obviously no, it's, you want to be a roux for dessert. No, right? this one what we're making here is actually a soak for it. Okay. So I've got mint here. That's true. There's no butter in it, so I'm joking. There is butter. There's no flour. I mean, that's what I meant. There's no flour. Have another wine. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you're not having me cook right now. So I get I get a handful of mint. It's supposed to be like half a cup, but whatever. And you crush it a bit to release the mint oils. Yeah. Makes it taste better. I'm gonna spread it in here. You so tell me what it was on? like when you heard you were on like the Wolfgang Puck uh, preferred vendor list. What, what, what the... It was great. I mean, like, well, the thing is, I was happy about it. I was really thrilled because their catering company was amazing. They're no longer here in Minneapolis. Okay. Um, but at the time, like, I'm no longer in the cake business either. Um, but they, we'd gone to an event with them, and they're, oh my god, their food was amazing. I've never had anything like that. It was so good. So I was really, I was really thrilled that they saw me as being, you know, worthy of putting out there. Especially in the wedding industry and the cake industry where so much of the referrals are paid for. You yeah. know, like most vendor lists, you have to pay to get on them. I didn't have to pay a cent for this. This was strictly merit-based. And it was Wolfgang fucking Puck. Fuck you, Joe. 
<laughs> Pudding cake. Dickhead. Did you submit this or to do how did No, they just picked me. Because wow. we were at this event and they tried it and they're like, hey. They loved it yeah. so much. Well, it is a fabulous cake. No, you know what? I mean, that, that brings up such a good point. On on our show, Master Chef, there were so many different types of cooks and different types of personalities mm -hmm. that people need to realize. Most of us could actually cook. Oh, yeah. And um, we all, one thing that connected, I would say 95% of us as well, had a passion for food. Yeah. So, this is the great thing about being away from the show is now we're really kind of going through this therapy session together. That's a good way of putting it. We're we're together in our trauma, you know. Like yeah. Even the people that didn't, like even the people that I wasn't, you know, close to in LA. Because I mean, there's a hundred people. It's hard to get really close yeah. to, you know, everyone in like the few days that you have, especially under the constraints you have, where it's very regimented and. And, I mean, it was jail. <laughs> like, well, but know? I can tell you one of the so, most beautiful things for me was the fact that literally six months ago, seven months ago, I had no clue my life was going to change. I mean, I was oh, yeah. cast on a show, get out to L.A., meet you, meet some other people, and then literally a week ago I'm in L.A. with one of the other contestants, and yeah. I'm with you this week cooking in your house. So it's yeah. been such a rewarding experience, and I feel like finally I'm getting... To do something I love with yeah. other passionate people. Well, and it's fascinating to me because a lot of the people that I befriended in LA and since LA, well, this is what I was saying, is that, you know, it might not have gotten the closest to everyone in LA, but even right. since then, like coming home, I feel like our our shared experience has really brought us all together. Oh, yeah. Well, not absolutely. all of us. There's a couple of dickheads. <laughs> See, she is the blunt voice, at least of the two of us, and probably of the hundred you of us. You want to tell me you're going to disagree with me? Let's, so what's the next? <laughs> what, so what's the next step? So here? okay, so what we're doing is I've got to actually. You know what? One sec, we'll come back. Okay. So that was never up again. Anyways. Okay. So I've got um, about a half a cup of mint crushed okay. up, in with a quarter cup of butter and a quarter cup of rum, and I'm putting a half cup of sugar in that. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna heat this. Can up I drink it? You totally can. It's awesome. Sweet. It probably hasn't steeped that much, but I totally really taste. Try it. Oh my gosh. You're going to so, get me drunk on the food. This is what I soak the cake with. I told Maria, so I'm great at like savory dishes, but baking I need help on. And she is an amazing baker, so. I am an amazing cook also. I know you are. No, okay. Let me, okay no, sorry. no, no, no. Okay, so this is a sore point. Because someone who shall not be named because someone has a fan in this room. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, better so, much? No, no, I just, you know, honestly, I didn't like him before the show. Okay. And I was very upfront with all my friends. Sean here knew my uh, my visitor cameraman. Hi, Sean. Hello. Was I uh, in the very, very small group of people that knew that I was going to be on the show. Yeah. And um, one of the things that all my friends were telling me before I went out there is like, don't bitch at Joe. Like, don't be yeah. snotty to Joe. Because they all know I have nothing... I don't have any respect for him. Like, the other two, like, Gordon and Graham, they're actually talented chefs and whatever, and I think Joe is a coattail riding little shit. Um, but my issues with him before, I mean, I don't like him. I don't like that he talks down to people. I think he's overly mean. Um, and I think that a big part of it is, uh, like, he'll do... He's such a hypocrite, and he drives me nuts, because he'll say, you know, like, last year's, he got on Josh for how he was pronouncing a really... Like, a type of pasta I'd never even heard of before. Tell right? you, tell I don't know if that was it, but whatever it was, he's like, no, say it like this. And he was saying it pretty damn close to what Joe was saying. And Joe's like, well, if you're going to cook it, you have to know how to pronounce it. And this is from the idiot that can't say espresso. Now, espresso is a very Italian drink. It's not espresso. It's espresso. And it's say not what like you really think. Once. Say what you really think. No, but it's not like he said it once. He repeatedly says <laughs> espresso. I will bet you anything this year he says espresso repeatedly. So it's like, I don't like that he's a moron. I don't like morons in power, that's the thing. So, and, okay, so Matt here does not agree with anything I say. <laughs> Wait, no, <laughs> I'm not a moron, never mind. <laughs> uh, Sean's not a moron. No, I mean, you know, the thing is, is I But think... no, this is the thing, but I'm saying it's not that I'm bitter that I didn't get an apron. It's to me, I went in there, I don't like him. And it's and it was I, funny to I me that he was the one that was mean to me. I dad. love his mom, Lydia, I respect him. I know he may not be the best cook, but he's a brilliant. I, th school pudding I think at he's best. a brilliant restaurateur. We knew what we were getting ourselves. <laughs> I realized that we were getting ourselves. We okay, knew so what we were getting was, ourselves into. But he was mean for the sake of being mean. 
Because at that point, I'd already had two notes. He didn't need to be insulting. He said that to be mean. He said that because I pissed him off, to be quite honest. Because what had happened was... Now, so he's got this image of this big, scary, like the bad guy and everything. So, you know, Gordon takes my cake and he's like, Graham's going to love this. And Graham takes it. It's obvious the two of them love the cake. And then Joe comes up, tries to stare me down. That's not going to happen. So he walks up to me and I'm trying not to laugh at him because my first thought is... Is like, because, you know, it's different when you're in person. And I'm like, the first thought was, this guy's a weaselly little shit. I'm like, this is a big intimidator. He's a weaselly little shit. So I'm like trying not to laugh at him. He starts staring at me. I'm like, oh, honey, no. You know? I'm like, so, so is this going to be stirred, by the way? No, no, it just okay. has to sit for 15 minutes. Oh. So he tries to stare me down. And I'm like, there's the death stare I've been waiting for. So I call him out on this. And he just, he looks like he's pissed off at me. And then he starts tearing me down. So I stare him back. No, I have got the most ridiculous grin on my face at this point. Because I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so I'm grinning at him. So the corners of his mouth start turning up. And as soon as he starts smiling, he gets his pissed off look in his eyes. Like, damn it, she made me smile. So he goes back to his little throne of judgment. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's awesome. And then it was only after all that that he's like, oh, it's boarding school putting it best. Who the fuck? Okay, you're a balding little old man. There's a coattail riding little shit. Where the fuck do you get off blowing a raspberry? You know who blows raspberries? Four year olds blows raspberries. Right? Have you ever blown a raspberry at anyone? Like, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, this experience has not earned him any more of my respect. But you know what? It's a TV show. <laughs> oh, it he is. is who he is on the show. He is who he is off the show. Oh, I have I followed his career. I am at all points. <laughs> I, and, and I respect that. I have followed Joe's career, so I do respect him. Mm -hmm. I knew what I was getting myself into. It's a Gordon Ramsay show. We should have all known. And if Gordon Ramsay had yelled at me, that would be one thing. But no. He also got snotty about but me. But he doesn't yell on the show, though. Oh, hasn't he? I thought he has. But anyway, so no, but the thing is, is Joe got snotty with me about the fact that I'm a self-publisher. Um, now, he's written coattails his entire life, and he's going to get off at me about being a self-publisher? I don't think so. Self-publishing is more work than going through a traditional publisher, and I'm type A, so guess what? That's the best option for me. So I'm not going to have some little coattail writing, little weasley little shit tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, tell me. Tell us how you really no, feel. Yeah, seriously. Like, if you're going to seriously insult me about something, like, don't get condescending that I choose. All right. Well, let's make up. No, no, no. Hang on. Let me go. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so, like, don't get on my case about self-publishing. And then, okay, so he owns wineries. Yay. And I told him that my food dream was to have, like, a little craft winery, because my husband and I homebrew, like, every kind of wine you can think of, except for grape. Because we're not big on grape. There's so many people doing grape wines. Yeah. Whatever. We'd rather do banana wine or whatever. And he got obnoxious about me that I made banana wine before I went out to the show. Like, no. Everybody <laughs> knows you're that. No. So. no, I just wanted to make it clear that I'm not bitter about not getting the apron. Because in my view, I think I'm better off not having gotten an apron. It was such a torturous experience, like, right up to that point. Um, like when my husband arrived there. No, I mean, I have Asperger's and I have yeah. big sensory issues. And I mean, you know how it was. Like we were in a small little room with Major Echo, 100 people excitedly talking to each other for hours on end. There was a dog whistle going off constantly. It was the worst experience of my life. And it's totally aside from aprons or cooking or other people or whatever. It's just, it was sensory overload. So well, like, I think I for all of us, I don't think that was a good environment for all of us no. in the sense that it was stress. I mean, when yeah. you're in a cooking... Any type of competition-based show or competition, you're under a lot of pressure. Mm. And when you're out there for so many days before you cook, you really mm. builds the pressure. So I get that 100%. I was actually feeling pressured. See, I was. I was really nervous. I was a figure skater, though. And to me, like, I thrive on that kind of competition. It's just, to me, it was all the sensory issues. And I mean, and I don't like being lied to, and I feel that that was another issue I was having. I mean, bottom line was, is I'm glad I didn't get an apron. Um, you know, I'm definitely not bitter about that fact. I just, I don't like people that are mean for the sake of being mean. And I think that I was, that. and it wasn't even so much just them. I mean, like there were a few people out there that were mean to other contestants for the sake of being mean. And that's not my bag. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I mean, bottom line, no, I'm not bitter about not getting an apron. I just, I don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> that may have been a little bit condescending earlier. What? I was no, I don't like people 
No, you I know what though? That. You did awesome. That's all that matters. And so did you. Thank you. <laughs> Your yeah. ravioli was amazing. So thank you. Yes. And I'm, I'm I can't wait to try this. I'm sure it's gonna be fucking. Well, we fun. have a lot of time now. So shall we drink? <laughs> shall we drink? Is that shall, a question? Shall we so, dance? Shall so we basically, drink? what we're doing here with this uh, with the soak here is I've got the rum up and I heated it up. So the the mint is actually very wilted. Looks like spinach at this point. Um, but it's leaching all the flavor out into the rum and the sugar are actually drawing the flavors out into the mix. How did you do this in an hour on the show? I, I, uh, converted my recipe to be three, uh, six inch pans instead oh. of a 12 inch pan. Okay. Yeah, so that actually worked really well. Um, I'm very much a time management freak. Uh, like anything logistics oriented, I'm all over that. I mean, that's part of why I wasn't stressed with, with the actual cooking, because it's like... I had trained so much for this. I mean, I went to a friend's place that I'd never cooked at, and I had all my ingredients in bags, because I'm like, that's how we're going to start out. And time trialed it in this shirt that I was supposed to be wearing on the show, and my hair was done the same way, and my makeup was done the same way, and it was basically like, here I am in a foreign element. How do you do? Preparing. I did the same thing. I, uh, I came in at like 54 minutes. You know what? Time trial. And I will say something is that... Uh, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> you were going to say Weasley little shit right now. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. But I mean, essentially. I'm surprised you haven't started calling him Voldemort. <laughs> he who must not be named. I mean, <laughs> Weasley little shit and Joey Coattails. I don't know what I was going to say. Well, I'm glad. No, no, no. On the, on the show, though, I mean, that's what people don't realize is that it really is only an hour. Mm -hmm. And to, that you have to cook. Well, and unless you get a power outage. It really is only an hour. So, <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop. You're gonna get me in trouble. I'm not gonna get you in trouble. You're trying to shut me up. You are trying to shut me up, man. That smells really good. <laughs> <laughs> that smells really good. No, I mean, I didn't even know what I was gonna say. But it, what, what did you say about before you practice at someone's house? What did I say about what? What did we say? You said something about practicing at someone's house right before that. Well, I said I went to my friend's place and the time trial did. What did you say right after the conference? What did I say right after that? Yeah. What? Practice the answer. Damn it. I guess it wasn't important. No I think he needs more wine. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Do you need to go back on the tape and check? <laughs> no, no, no. That's okay. Fine. Anyways, so here's an interesting point. So, on the show... Um, <laughs> No, 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 this is legit. This is legit. Well, it's all legit, but this is legit. You want to probably <laughs> She's like, this is legit. No, too legit, legit to quit? <laughs> okay. I can't remember what you do too. Legit to quit. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I guess whatever. I'm so old. I'm totally giving up my age there now. So, um, on the show, they, they confiscate your ingredients after you go to go back. So I handed my rum bottle off to my husband. I'm like, hide this, because I knew one way or the other I was going to need it later, right? And it was like a whole like liter and a half of, of rum. So I handed it off to him, packed my cart, and went to go wait to go back. And when I got there, I dumped too much powdered sugar into my frosting, like the, the little glaze that I make for on top of this. Um, and I didn't have any rum to thin it out after, so it was like this clumpy mess. So I'm like, whatever, it doesn't need it. It honestly doesn't need it. I mean, yeah. it's great. It's a mint. What I do is basically make another mint infusion of rum. And mix powdered sugar into it, right? <laughs> so that was awesome, right? <laughs> so it's really awesome. So but here's the thing: I don't have any powdered sugar, <laughs> so we're not going to be doing the frosting today. Oh, yeah. Being, I just realized you're being that. <laughs> She's like, no, that's why I'm like, this is legit, because I'm like, oh my god, I don't have any powdered sugar. So how much of a difference does it make, though? Honestly? Well, I mean, you can't make the frosting the glaze at all without powdered sugar. <laughs> so how would you make the frosting glaze? Well, what if happens you had it? is for the sugar is I'll take another half cup of um, crushed up mint leaves. And I steep though? it in. No, I'm positive I don't. I'm not that smart right now, apparently. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I seriously don't. I believe you. I'm just surprised. Okay, so now he's going through my messy cupboards. Anyways, um, what I was going to say, oh, I just screwed up the timer. What did I do? See, this is what I was going to drink. This is, I'm, expecting. And I'm the mensum. <laughs> Anyways, so, um, yeah, I take a quarter cup of rum, and I steep another half cup of crushed up mint leaves in it, heat it up, let it sit, strain it out, and then whisk powdered sugar into it. Drizzle it over the cooled cake. Well, okay, so here's the deal. We're not going to let the cake cool before we eat it, because I've waited years for this, and you've waited months for this. Yeah. 
So there won't be a cool cake to put the frosting on. That's fine. But it's not, I mean, it doesn't need it. It's, it's and, you know, I'm not even the biggest frosting type guy anyway. It's just like a glaze, and it just puts a bit of mint flavor on top of the cake, because it gets soaked from one end. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, Should we get the hand gesture? No, we don't need the hand gesture on camera. <laughs> oh my god, but you know where I got that from? Yeah, I Julie. did. Truly. <laughs> Oh, you would have loved this contestant. Oh, well, I hope she makes it to air. So by the time this airs, we'll know whether or not she airs. But there's this girl, Julie. She's the cutest thing. And she was making a bunch of stuff. She was making lobster, mashed she did, potatoes, she did a lobster and some kind and of salmon. A cherry, she did a cherry glazed salmon. Okay. And then and she did a chocolate cake. Now, granted. I got to describe the chocolate cake because okay, we'll practice okay, this. Okay. Okay. So she was doing a chocolate cake, and it was a pyramid cake, and then a round cake, and a square cake on and top. She would always describe it like. So she'd be like this. But then she puts the cherry filling in there. <laughs> she would, and then you got that hand, I have the noise, she'd go. Pah. Oh, she never did that to me. Oh, she But she's like, and then I put the cherry filling in there. She goes, she's you like know. She's a wrestler. I feel she, like I'm like a pro wrestler. She's like, you know, she's like, you just stick it up in it. <laughs> That's oh, man, I never did that. No, 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 she did the just big, like, I put the cherry filling in there. <laughs> and, and then <laughs> she's going to serve it to them. I so hope this makes it to the air. Because she's gonna, she she doesn't tell them there's cherry filling in the cake. Oh, and she wanted to kidnap Gordon. Remember that? I remember that. But anyway, so she serves it. She's gonna serve the cake to them, and when they dig in and see that there's cherry filling in this like cake, she's gonna yell, "Surprise, bitch!" <laughs> and that was the name of her cake was Surprise Bitch. So I think sometime I might need to make a Surprise Bitch cake. I think so. But yeah, she wanted to kidnap Gordon and. Put him yes, in, in a box and run off with them. She's and so she wore a apron that said "I love Gordon" on it. Oh, I didn't even see that. She was awesome. Uh, she I really... was. Um, she was. Yeah, she was cool. <laughs> <laughs> there were some characters. There were some there big were some characters. characters. Oh my gosh! So. No, no, there was. Um, she. <laughs> <laughs> She's. <laughs> she stuck out in my mind. Damien's got to cut a promo and go like this. I just feel you know what I mean. What is well, Damien? Did Damien wear his wrestling uniform? Yes. Damien is like the sweetest, like most calm Big guy. Teddy bear. Yes, that you ever meet. But he's actually a wrestler in real life. But there. But he's like a man. In, re in real life, compared to the show, not very real life. But he's like. Yeah, we've got a weird concept of real life at this point. Yeah. Reality, reality, TV. So I think we've turned this segment more into like. Chatting. Well, I mean, it's baking. I mean, like this is what I did on the show. Is I basically I had, like, I think it took me eight minutes to get everything made. Yeah. And in the oven, and I sat there like this the whole time. Because <laughs> what do you do? You're like, I'm being timed. Did that make you feel a lot better, knowing that everything was kind of in the oven and everything was ready? Honestly, like, it's to me, I'm very mechanic about it, like, very mechanical about it. It's like, da 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 done. And it was coming out at this point. Now, the thing was, is my oven wasn't working properly, so, like, when I checked it, like, like <sighs> 10 minutes to go, Excuse me. it was not... It wasn't even anywhere near baking. We had oh shit. We had Sorry. very <laughs> different cooking experiences on the show. She was calm and got to stay in there. I was jumping over wires and running back and forth between yes. things and freaking out and cursing left and right. Yeah. So we but had no, I her. freaked out as soon as the oven like as soon as I looked and it's like raw batter. I'm like, what the fuck? And so I you knew it was raw. When you I yelled. Out. Oh well, no, because I looked at it because I had like ten minutes ago. I'm like, oh shit, this isn't anywhere near baked. So I jacked the temperature like way up and I'm like. There's and nothing how did it turn part. out after you... Oh, it turned out perfect. Like, absolutely perfect. Like, you would not know that this thing had, like, not been cooked, like, ten minutes before. So what they'll do is they're going to show you, you going, what the fuck, and then show them saying it's boring school pudding at best. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm making her freak out more. Whatever. No, I don't actually care, because I know at this point it's totally out of my hands. And, uh... <laughs> I'm already assuming the worst. Like, it's kind of hard to freak me out, because I'm assuming the worst. Like, they're going to well, make know. me look like a jackass. Like, because they have me talk about my IQ a lot. And I'm used to it, because I'm in Mensa, and Sean's in Mensa. And we have lots of Mensa friends, so it'd be on well, reality TV. Gonna... No, they make you look like a dick. You're, no, you're like me. You just are, I think, confident, and you can come across like an ass sometimes. No, I don't come across like an ass. I <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> He's like, no. He's no, like, no, no, no. Well, it's true. No, what they'll do is, like, because even our friend Stephanie was on the glass house, and she's, like, the sweetest thing alive. There's not an ounce of, like, cocky idiot in her, but they, they definitely kind of come her no. to be a jerk. So, you know, it's like, it, it, it's kind of, it comes with the territory, because, like, they seek us out. Like, reality shows will go to Mensa and be like, we're looking for people for this. Yeah. 
and they'll seek us out, and then they make us look like jerks. And because we're so <laughs> smart, we keep falling for it. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we going to do now? We're going to wait. Okay. And that just sits there? Just so this camera. smells... Okay. This smells so freaking good in oh, here. Oh, it's so good in here, though. It's, it's, this cake's amazing. So it's made about the right time. Oh, it looks perfect. So, the way you tell if it's done is... Insert knife. You got it all clean. It's just done. Look so. at this. Uh, it's amazing. It's just like so easy and quick about it. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. Whoa. <laughs> I'm jinxing you. I I just... made you are jinxing me. I'm totally going to blame you for this. Okay. Normally it gets a little now, bit what, what is this point? So this is, I'm cutting the dome off it. Okay. It's usually a bit more of a dome. You want to try that? You can go ahead. Roll it up. How do you like that? You reduced the grunts now. Um, it's He's bad. too busy eating to enunciate well. No, you mean you want to fall that mint on it? Oh yeah, it's a mango mojito cake. So there's lots of there's mango, there's rum, and there's mint. Right, but you don't want the raw mint on it. The rum isn't there. No, no. I was trying to be goof. So this no. is that soak we made earlier. Okay. Let's try to get it relatively even, which I did not do. What? Get another shot of him <laughs> grabbing a handful. Nice. Of it's okay. So usually I'd let that it. sit a little bit longer, but I'm impatient. So, cross your fingers because sometimes it sticks. Not a pain in the ass. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. No, where would... A couple would, of them did not come out right. Where would the um, icing go if you were to have icing? Well, normally what I would do is just drizzle it over top. Okay. This isn't pretty, I'm sorry. Looks fine to me. They did not stick on the show. So... Mm. Hi, it looks good. <laughs> and it tastes a good from what I've tried. I can't wait to try that right there. Well, normally it's like room temperature, but I'm not patient, so. I like things hot. I bet you do. I've had a little piece of this. You know. Oh! Almond. It's me. This is seriously, it's me. I must have like a. I know, I told you, you're too patient. Master chef almond around me. Do you want to grab a fork? Grab a fork too. I didn't knock the cake over on the show either. Mm, I'm sure. <laughs> I no, I didn't. Alright. I haven't had this in years. I love it so much. Alright. Okay. Oh my gosh. Mm hmm. That is really good. I'm totally not kidding. This is like really, it. really good. I think it's the best cake I've ever invented. And I've invented a lot of cakes, so. It's not even totally. It tastes pocket. like a mojito on a plate. Mm hmm. It is really good. With sugar. Oh my, he does have sugar. Lots of sugar, I mean. I'm Canadian. I have a typical Canadian sweet tooth. Yeah, I'm just sweet tooth in. I don't know. You should, you should see some of our delicacies in Canada. Like butter tarts. Your sugar pie. We have a pie in Canada where you get a pie crust. You're so good. You get a pie crust and you pack it with brown sugar and then you pour a little bit of cream on it and you bake it. Sugar pie. I'm not even making that up. This is really, really good. Seriously, like, I don't even need alcohol. This takes our dessert. This takes place of both. Well, this is, like, the thing is, is, like, there's a lot of rum cakes where all you taste is rum. Right, no, I, I taste like more that. this is balanced. It's, like, a very... I like... All right. All you know what I love this cake? <laughs> but I'm biting my lip like that, where I look a little weird, because I have a split lip, not because of the flavor of the cake. Let me clarify. He it. has a split lip, because he wouldn't let me mouth off about Joe. And I went, no, I didn't. So, I, didn't <laughs> I like the balance, though. Uh, seriously, because you have a really nice balance here between the rum and then the, the, the peaches, the way they cook. The mangoes? 
<laughs> you, you can edit it. I got. They ain't no frozen peaches either. No. Okay. The mangoes. <laughs> the way the mangoes are, it's just. Yes, the rum is strong, yeah. but the mangoes really take away from the strength of the rum. And the mint, I think, balances. And the mint, ba it all balances out. It's a yeah. nice combination. It's kind of like just like sitting on a tropical island eating mm -hmm. this cake. It's like it's a perfect day. Just eating this cake is just a perfect day. Oh yeah, and you know what's the perfect morning? It's like when you let this sit for a couple days because it's actually good for a few days. You know? Right, because it's so. And then you make French toast out of it. Oh my gosh. Oh no, yeah. that's a. Oh yeah. Roll. This is my cake. I had fun. I too. Thank you. <laughs> she's like, I've been in Minnesota and she's just feeding me, so. Well, I used to say that, like, deep down, because I'm Irish Canadian, but, like, deep down, I'm like someone's Italian grandma. So I always feed people. Well, I gotta feed people, you know, just like, so you show love. Yeah, uh, to me. And I didn't get to feed you in Los Angeles. <laughs> That's okay. To me, <laughs> is, uh, I think we were fed enough. But to me, uh... You're fed, you know. <laughs> to be... <laughs> okay. To oh my me, god, you make me cry. Food is all about love. So, this is, yeah. This is just like sitting on a tropical island. It's perfect. I'm seriously, I'm gonna cut myself another piece. Oh, go for it. But, we had a blast. I had a blast. Yeah, I did too. It was great. Okay.